gift of the night. Mother and child within heavens unite. Light of God conquering sin, blessed is the parent who shows us the way to a blessed Merry Christmas, a blessed Holy Day. Each day is a blessing, raising the child in the world, things impressing, both holy and beguiled, caring, protecting, the God-child obey. For every day is Christmas, a child's holy day. Follow God's calling and doing His will. Rising and falling, the earth in flux, heaven still, child grows in stature and maturity. Heaven's directing him to Calvary. Mother is grieving the son's sacrifice. Cross is now leading us to heavenly paradise. Love of the mother has saved us from harm. The sun completes mission and rests in her arms. The work of the Spirit still guides us back to His grace. Words of God bring to us the holy place. Mother and child provide mercy today. For every day's Christmas, a child's holy day, gift of the night. Mother and child within heavens unite. Light of God conquering sin, blessed is the parent who shows us the way to a blessed Merry Christmas, a blessed Holy Day, a blessed Merry Christmas, a blessed Merry Christmas, a blessed Holy Day. the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. We're coming to the end, people. My brothers and sisters, four candles are now lit on our Advent wreath, and we are that much closer to Christmas Day where we commemorate the light of Christ coming into the world as we give thanks for this gift that we do not deserve but we desperately need. Let us open our hearts to God's presence as we call to mind our sins. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy animal to one, have mercy upon us. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Santo Dios, Santo Poderoso, Santo Immortal, ten piedad de nosotros. Christe eleison, Christe eleison. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy animal to one, have mercy upon us. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. 
For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known to us by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of the resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Should you build a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be the commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people in Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. He shall say of me, You are my Father, my God, my Rock, my Savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him, and my covenant with him stands firm. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamations of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophet's writings, and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all the nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. 
The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? The angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her, who is called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Throughout this Advent season, I have been talking about the response of our Blessed Mother to the call of the angel. My very personal homily on the Immaculate Conception talks about how my mother called me to live a life of a vocation, how my mother introduced me to the call of the Holy Spirit, and how I responded accordingly. I also, during the Immaculate Conception homily, talked about my journey as a deacon and how I have celebrated this life as a deacon for the last 25 years. I have offered two reflections on the calling of Christian parents, on the calling of those who have responded to this presence of the light in their lives. Today is December 20th on the feast of the fourth Sunday of Advent. On the 18th, 19th, and 20th I have preached that these are the calls that have been given to Zechariah, Joseph, and today our Blessed Mother, and our Blessed Mother's response, I am the handmaid of the Lord, let it be done to me according to thy word, was also the same theme for the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. We just celebrated the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe, which is an extremely personal event for those uh, from the Mexican community because our Blessed Mother appeared in Tepeyac, Mexico, and the Mexican uh, community very much considers her a member of the family. Pope Pius XII, St. Pope John Paul II, have declared that the, uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe is the patroness of the Americas, North, South, and Central America, which I came to find out when I went to visit Anchorage, Alaska, and went to their cathedral dedicated to Guadalupe herself. So it is no surprise that 150 or so years ago in Turin, Italy, when St. John Bosco was talking to the faithful about the role of Mary in their lives, he asked them, who is Mary? Now, some people were befuddled by the question. Some people gave the stock answers. She's the mediatrix. She's the mother of God. She is the mother of our Lord. She is the first tabernacle of the New Testament. All those answers are correct, but it was not what John Bosco was seeking. He said, who is Mary. St. John Bosco responded very well, he said, smiling. Mary is our mother. Mary is the comfort of sinners. Mary is what counts, and that is the main thing for us. There is no other person as dear as our mother. No one so much and by whom we are loved. No person so willing to grant us benefits and have pity on us, so too in heaven there is no other saint that loves us and is so ready to listen to us and sympathize for us as the Blessed Mother. He wanted to make it personal. 
he wanted to get it in los huesos, in the bone, that Mary is the mother of us all, Mary is a member of our family, Mary has been trying to guide us and lead us and love us throughout our lives. That rosary, that garden of prayers that we are called to recite, that our Father, that Hail Mary, that Glory Be, we plant each of those prayers in our spiritual garden, and we ask the Blessed Mother to help them grow. In today's Gospel reading, as we did for the Immaculate Conception, as we certainly have focused on Our Lady of Guadalupe, the Solemnity of Mary, the Assumption of Mary, we focus on an individual who dedicated her life to taking care of her son. She is the first tabernacle. She is the first clean house of the New Testament. As God told David that his son would be a worthy successor to build that temple for the Ark of the Covenant. So our Blessed Mother becomes the temple, becomes the tabernacle that holds the most sacred gift we could ever encounter in our life, the presence of God, which is found in every single Catholic Church throughout the world. That tabernacle, lit by that tabernacle lamp, tells us no other creature in this world is more sacred than who is in front of us. And that is the reason that it is so important to enter that church and to spend time with the one who loves us and to remind ourselves of the one who made it possible for him to enter the world. Mary's response is a reminder to us of the model and response that we need to make in our own lives. And that is a constant theme that I have been trying to reiterate during the Advent reflections we've put online and on the various services during the season of Advent. We have to prepare ourselves to allow Christ to enter our lives by having a clean house, by allowing this light to shine within us, by doing what is necessary to prepare for the coming of Christ, by living a Christ-like life. And over the last few weeks, there have been so many good examples of this kind of spirit, this poverty of spirit, that Bishop Oscar Romero, St. Oscar Romero, had preached over 25 years ago. He talked about a poverty of spirit. If we are cleansed, if our house is empty, if it is ready to accept God, then... We are worthy vessels for what is yet to come. He writes, No one can celebrate a genuine Christmas without truly being poor. The self-sufficient, the proud, those who have no need even of God, for them, there will be no Christmas. Only the poor, the hungry, those who need someone to come on their behalf will have that someone, and that someone is God, Emmanuel, God with us. Without poverty of spirit, there cannot be an abundance of God. Over the last week, we have had individuals that have helped us with our various projects, with the Veterans Home, with the El Centro Villa Seca. I had one individual that came to me and wrote me a check for $500 to take care of the poor. That gave us the opportunity to provide gift cards and toys and clothes, new toys and clothes for families who did not have the means to provide for their children during this particular month. We had an individual that had thanked us, an individual from my past, who wasn't even a member of St. Patrick's Church, who said he wanted to help the church out because he had been watching these online masses and he wanted to support the communities who are taking care of the needy. He wrote our parish a check for $5,000 and asked two pews to be dedicated to members of his family that he wanted to remember. We have had so many folks in this community who have come forward with gifts and with prayers and with support and with phone calls and with pastoral visits that it is just overwhelmingly a poverty of spirit in this community where people are saying it is not about me, it is about everybody else. And I always take myself back to that second chapter of Philippians he who was in the form of God did not deem equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself and took the form of a slave. God talks to us. 
and calls us to empty ourselves so that we can receive the light of Christ. When we are poor in spirit, when we live like Oscar Romero tells us, to have this type of spiritual poverty, that it is not about us, and it is not about climbing a ladder, and it's not about self-gratification, but it's always about the other person. Once we live like that, then we truly understand what Christmas means, and then we are ready to celebrate it. Once again, here at the parishes I serve, we will have a Mass at 3 o'clock in the afternoon at St. Patrick's on December 24th, and a Mass at 5 o'clock at St. Anne's. I will get my guitar out for a 10 o'clock Vigil Mass on December 24th at St. Patrick's. On Christmas Day, 9 o'clock at St. Anne's, 10.30 at St. Patrick's in English, 12 o'clock noon at St. Patrick's in Spanish. So many people have been preparing for these days. Please feel free to join us here in the border towns, or if you cannot, please join us online and know that, as God says, I am with you always until the end of the age. We need to be here for each other. We need to care for each other and love each other and allow Christ's light to shine through us, to shine upon each other. If we do that, we'll be ready for what's yet to come. Have a blessed Advent and a Merry Christmas. This is our prayer. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. O oh God of love, you look with favor on your servant Mary. Now look with favor on the prayers that we bring to you. For our Holy Father and all leaders of the church, that they work for reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders in this country and throughout the world, that they seek peace and justice by helping the poorest nations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those caught in the web of addiction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christians, particularly the members of this assembly, that they may proclaim the good news by word and example, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, that they may find God's love in the hands of their caregivers. Especially today, we remember those in our parish's sick list. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died may find the promise of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions that have been offered this last week, that they and their families be embraced by God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In joyful expectation of Christmas, we place these petitions before our merciful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever, with humble spirit and contrite heart. May we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord of my iniquity, wash me and cleanse me of my sin. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, St. Anne, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis our Pope and Ronald our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather yourself, all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you, that their passing from this life give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of our Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace. On you stay, qui tolis peccatamundi, Misere re nobis, on you stay, qui tolis peccatamundi, misere re nobis, on you stay, qui tolis peccatamundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. 
Having received this pledge of eternal salvation, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So this year I have been asked to celebrate all the Christmas Masses at the Border Town parishes on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. I guarantee you, we have plenty of room. You are all welcome to join us. On Christmas Eve at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I'll be over at St. Patrick's in Moments. 5 o'clock at night, over at St. Anne's at St. Anne, Illinois, in the National Shrine. Back to St. Patrick's in Moments at 10 o'clock at night on Christmas Day. We have a Mass at St. Anne's at 9 in the morning and an English Mass at St. Patrick's at 10.30 a.m. and a Spanish Mass at 12 noon. My Spanish choir and Kevin Sampson are going to provide music for all the liturgies with the exception of Christmas Eve at 10 o'clock at night where I will be forced to bring out the guitar and lead people in song and you're just going to have a wonderful opportunity to laugh at the poor priest and his lousy music. I promise you, we will find room for you. We will make this a good, warm, welcoming experience. We want you to come. We want to support you. All we ask you to do is support each other. Support your local parishes. Pray for each other. Love each other. Shine light on each other. We are going to just do whatever we can to help you out. Once again, if you need anything from us during the Christmas season, a sunshine phone call, a pastoral visit. Please do not hesitate to call us. I've been doing a lot of house visitations, a lot of house blessings. Uh, we had our first baptism at St. Anne's in two years, and we have a great number of individuals who have wanted to receive the sacrament. So we're going to do what we can to help them out and hopefully help you out as well. If you cannot make it to our services, please know that we will offer these online liturgies next week uh, I will be celebrating all the Christmas Masses here in the chapel, Christmas Day, Holy Family, Solemnity of Mary, the Epiphany. We're going to do our part to make sure that we offer this Christmas light to you. Please know you are always in our thoughts and prayers. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. I invite you to bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful of hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that, rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. This Mass is ended. Now go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed Christmas, everyone.